Movie Clips is glad to have you back. Today, I'll show you a movie from 2015 called I Am a Hero. It's an action, comedy, and horror movie. Hideo Suzuki is an assistant to a manga artist. He is drawing in an office with his co-workers while they listen to the news. A news reporter is telling a story about a 45-year-old woman who was badly hurt when a dog bit her. After the accident, the woman started making up stories, so the police couldn't figure out what happened. The next story is about a 35-year-old man who was arrested for doing things that were not appropriate. And another co-worker, Mitani, makes fun of Suzuki and manga artists. Suzuki then says that manga is the pinnacle of Japanese culture and that being a manga artist is a great honor. When night comes, Suzuki gets home. In his apartment, he and his passive-aggressive girlfriend Teko watch TV and draw. He looks at his manga award and quotes like the Steve Jobs of manga and the road to manga is hard to give him inspiration. Suzuki needs ideas for his next comic, so he gets a rifle out of his closet and looks in the mirror. Everyone at the publisher's office, where Suzuki is showing his new manga comic about a tough guy protecting his girlfriend with a rifle, is sick and coughing in the morning. The publisher doesn't like the comic, says the main character is too normal, and tells Suzuki to do a better job in the future. Then, another manga artist, Sensei, sees Suzuki. Even though Sensei is more well known than him, he and Suzuki shared an award for best new manga artist 15 years ago. Later, Suzuki and Teko are fighting in Suzuki's apartment. Teko wants to sell the rifle so that they can get at least some money and pay rent. She wants to sell both his manga books and his award. So, she breaks up with him and kicks him out of the apartment in a fit of rage. Then Suzuki takes his gun to the park and starts reading Sensei's comic book. A homeless man is sitting next to him. He is shaking and looks like he is in pain, but Suzuki doesn't pay much attention to him. The next morning, Suzuki and his co-workers are back in his office, drawing and watching the news. A new infection that has already killed four people has been reported. The person who works with Suzuki is sweating and doesn't feel good. She leaves, and Mitani tells the others that Sensei gave her the virus. Mitani sees that she has the same bite mark on her neck as Sensei, and that's how he knows they were sleeping together. When their boss walks in, he too has a bite mark. They don't know what's going on, so they ask him about the deadline without noticing that his eyes are getting darker. Suzuki's phone rings. Teko is the one who wants to keep going out with her after what happened last night. Helicopters fly over the city while Suzuki is on the phone with Teko, again. He goes straight to Teko's apartment and begs her to open the door. He brings her favorite snack with him. Suzuki looks through the letter slot and sees Teko lying on the bed. She gets up all of a sudden, moves in strange ways, and falls to the floor. The next thing we know, she's having a seizure while her body changes in ways that don't make sense, like a demon being driven out of a house. Suzuki sees that her face has changed as she walks toward the door. He accidentally stabs her in the head while trying to get away, then quickly leaves the apartment. As he walks across the bridge, he sees a woman with a cut hand and then a lot of planes flying over the city. When Suzuki gets back to the office, he sees Mitani standing with his back to the TV. Suzuki thinks he's a zombie, too, until he sees him holding a bloody baseball bat. He then sneaks into the office, where all of Suzuki's other co-workers are dead zombies and only Mitani is still alive. He tells Suzuki that the only way to kill a zombie is to destroy its brain, and that anyone bitten by a zombie will get sick. But it turns out that Mitani is also bitten, and when he starts to turn into a zombie, when another infected co-worker comes to work, Suzuki leaves the office quickly. Half of the people on the streets don't even know what's going on. Some people are strolling down the street, and others are running. Within a few minutes, people start to notice that some of the zombies look like demons. Some people start to run, while others get eaten by the zombies. Suzuki tries to get help from a police officer, but the officer is also a zombie and starts to chase Suzuki. All of a sudden, he steps on a large group of people running in the same direction. People are getting run over by ambulance cars, and cars are crashing into each other. Buildings in the city are also on fire. In the middle of all that chaos, Suzuki sees a taxi driver sleeping in his car. Hiromi, a high school student, goes up to him before he goes inside. She also wants to get in the taxi, but a zombie on the phone attacks them. Suzuki thinks he's pulling out his gun and aiming it at the zombie, so he just stands there and shoots with his fingers. A man in a suit wants to take their taxi at the same time. 
They start banging on the car windows and are lucky enough to get in. They tell the driver to drive toward the country. On the cat TV, the attacks are called riots in the news, so they turn on Tokyo TV and see an anime cartoon. Suzuki thinks Tokyo is safe because they are showing anime, but soon the cartoon is over and the attacks are reported. As they watch, the man in the business suit talks on the phone and tells someone to shoot everyone, including the prime minister if they have to. His blood vessels turn black very quickly. He is turning into a zombie while saying, Hey, poor people, give me a tissue. The taxi driver doesn't know that the businessman is turning into a zombie, so he gives him a tissue. The new zombie then bites him and talks about how bad the meat of poor people is. When the driver opens the door, Suzuki pushes the zombie out. When the taxi driver's veins start to turn black, he starts telling them how, for 30 years, he was a great taxi driver who never had an accident. Then he gets mad about it and drives like a crazy person. Hiromi moves to the back seat, which is a good thing because the taxi driver starts to attack them soon after. Since the car is going fast, Suzuki and Hiromi put on their seat belts. They soon hit another car and start to roll. The car is turned over when Suzuki wakes up, but Hiromi is still alive. When they get out of the car, they see that a big accident has shut down the whole road. Since there are no people on the road and all the cars are empty, Suzuki and Hiromi sit on the sidewalk and look at their phones to find out what's going on. They read that the virus is called ZQN and that it changes the minds and bodies of people who get it, making their bodies look different. They read that the virus will die if you climb Mount Fuji when the phone's battery is dead. When night comes, they look for a place to sleep and find an empty house. They talk about Suzuki's ripple while they eat the melon bread that Suzuki bought for Teko. He sees it more as a charm to keep him safe. Hiromi then says that her earphones are also a charm that keeps bad things away. They start to listen to music, and she tells Suzuki that she feels safe around him. The next morning, when they wake up, Suzuki stares at her while she sleeps. He likes her, even though she is too young to date. But he sees a bite mark on the back of her neck and pulls out his gun to protect himself. Hiromi then says that her neighbor's baby bit her two days ago and that ZQN can spread through breast milk, so it's likely that she's infected. Hiromi doesn't mind if Suzuki kills her because she has nothing left in this world, but Suzuki refuses and tells her that he was bitten too. He takes the gun and promises to keep her safe until they reach Mount Fuji, where he hopes the virus will die. As they go through a forest on their scary adventure, Hiromi starts to feel sick. She tells Suzuki to leave her because she doesn't want to eat him. She gives him the earphones as a goodbye gift and begs him to leave as she turns away. But the man is just another undead person. Suzuki is being attacked by the zombie, and the zombie is about to eat his face when Hiromi comes out of nowhere, kills the zombie, and saves Suzuki. She has a face that is half human and half demon, and she starts ripping the zombie's body parts off without hurting Suzuki. The next thing we know, Suzuki and Hiromi are sitting near a trailer park, and Suzuki is looking for canned food. Hiromi, who is half zombie, isn't talking, and it's clear that she has some zombie traits. Still, she doesn't pose a threat to Suzuki, so the two of them keep going to Mount Fiji. After a few days, Suzuki is carrying Hiromi on his back and has a full beard. He comes across a shopping cart on the forest road. When they get there, the whole shop is empty. When he is trying on jackets in one of the stores, the zombie store manager attacks him. Hiromi is sleeping, so she can't save him, but Tsugumai Oda, who is wearing a mask, uses an axe to kill the zombie. When other masked people show up and start asking about the two new people, she starts to look at Hiromi's weird sleeping face, so everyone will start running to a safe place. All of the healthy people made a safe zone on top of the outlet. Suzuki is asked to join, and he brings Hiromi with him without telling anyone she is half zombie. They have everything they need in the safe zone, from food, and tents to books and Rolex watches. Tsugumai likes Suzuki's ripple, but he tells her that he only draws manga. She asks if quiet Hiromi is his sister, and he says that they met when they were both running away from zombies. Because she thinks he is a good person, Tsugumai starts to like the manga artist. Hiromi is watching Suzuki in the morning, and Suzuki is wondering if she gets him. She gives him a smile, and then he reads her a poem. Seems like Hiromi is getting better. Later, Suzuki is watching the zombies when he sees one of them running, jumping really high, and hitting his head on the ground. Abe, an old man, says that the zombies are doing what they used to do all the time and that each zombie is different. 
Suzuki then asks about the zombies that sit on the ground and look like they are made of charcoal, but Abe doesn't answer. After that, Suzuki meets up with the other people who are still alive. They want to get into the underground food storage. All they want from Suzuki is for him to give them his gun. He says no because it is against the law, but Ira, the leader, says there are no laws in the safe zone. Some of the survivors are trying to take Hiromi, but Tsugumai is trying to stop them. Suzuki thinks something is up, rushes out of the meeting, and finds Hiromi in the hands of someone else. He tells the Ira that if they don't let Hiromi go, he will shoot them with the ripple. The leader then points a gun at Hiromi, who is standing there in silence. No one thinks she can kill everyone in a split second. But she can't take it any longer, so she throws the two guys off her with one move and then tells them she is a ZQN, making her fall to the ground. They take Suzuki's gun while he sobs over the death of the girl. They start punching and kicking Suzuki as he begs them to stop. Soon, they start arguing over who will kill him. Even people seem to like the taste of blood. Everyone starts fighting, and Ira is soon replaced by someone else. They don't kill Suzuki, and he finds Tsugumai standing in front of Hiromi's tent. She hit Hiromi, who is still alive, with the help of Abe. Tsugumai tells Suzuki that Hiromi is different from the rest of the ZQN because she has a heartbeat. She also tells him about how she ran away from her job and left her patients alone in the hospital. She tells Suzuki that she admires him for saving Hiromi. Suzuki is still upset about not being able to shoot Ira and losing his gun. He thinks he's a coward and a loser, but Tsugumai tells him he's just a good person. Suzuki then says he's sorry for being a bad person and asks Tsugumai to take care of the girl because he has to go with the others to the food storage. Later, a few survivors hit pans to draw the zombies' attention to the roof, while the rest of the survivors go to the underground food storage from the other side of the building. One of them accidentally makes a noise. Someone turns on the lights while they are walking, but no one asks why. They find it right away, but they don't know that someone is watching them through the security camera. As they are packing food, the mysterious observer turns on music in the outlet. The zombie attacks one of the survivors because it is also hungry. They shoot the person and the zombie, but the parking lot is full of other zombies. Suzuki runs last and says sorry to one of the people being eaten for leaving. Most of the survivors get eaten and die in the parking lot because they don't have good plans and are too selfish. Ira is the one who started all of this by turning on the music on purpose so that the zombies would come. He had another plan, though, which was to take the only car in the parking lot. Suzuki hides in a storage locker during all the chaos. At the same time, the zombie who can jump high is stalking the roof, getting ready for one big jump. He runs very fast and jumps as high as he can, landing right on a tent then goes after another woman and crushes her head with his hands. Ira is watching security tapes and types in a passkey, which lets more zombies into the building. Suzuki is still hiding when he hears on his walkie-talkie that nearly everyone on the rooftop was killed by a zombie. Tsugumai is terrified while she and Hiromi are hiding on the roof, so she calls for help on the walkie-talkie. Fear and his imagination are making him feel bad, so he decides to stay in his locker. However, he hears Tsugumai crying on the walkie-talkie, which makes him think of Hiromi. He knows he has to get over his fear, so he starts to yell and gets out of the locker. Suzuki is attacked by a zombie right away, and it bites him. But luckily, he has 10 Rolex watches on his wrist, so he doesn't get infected by the zombie. Then Suzuki uses the walkie-talkie to let Tsugumai know he's on his way. But they decide to meet each other in the parking lot and take one of the cars. Suzuki is smartly fighting zombies by putting rice on the floor to make them slip, while Tsukumai is carrying Hiromi on her back and walking toward the parking lot. When she gets there, he finds Ira, who wants to make love to her and leave Suzuki behind. But Ira is also bitten, so he turns into a zombie very quickly. Tsukumai runs away with Hiromi on her back, but Suzuki saves them just in time. He found the ripple and hit Ira in the head with it. Soon after, they see a big group of zombies chasing after Abe. The people who are still alive are surrounded by zombies, and no one knows what to do. But Hiromi starts talking for the first time, telling Suzuki that she feels good when she's with him. He then gets fired up and starts shooting as many zombies as he can. Only Suzuki, Hiromi, and Tsukumai make it out alive in the end. They kill all of the zombies except for the one that jumped onto the roof. Suzuki only has one bullet left but he still hits the zombie in the head. Since the zombie's head is already broken, 
the bullet does nothing to him. He goes straight towards Chugamai and Hiromi instead. But the hero doesn't give up. Instead, he swings the rifle like a bat and destroys the zombie's brain for good this time. The three people leave the outlet while a river of dead zombies flows around them. Tsuchugamai lights up a cigarette and puts on music in the car, while Suzuki wonders if he will also turn into a zombie. And he still doesn't think he's a hero after all that.